Здравствуйте! Доброе утро! Добрый день! Добро пожаловать на урок русского языка! Сегодня мы говорим о городе и о деревне. We have been discussing town and country for some time, but today we will look at what we can find inside a house or inside an apartment. Но сначала Давайте поговорим по-русски. Итак, Иван Иванович, Анна Петровна, Максим и Нина живут в Москве. У них хорошая новая квартира. А бабушка и дедушка живут в деревне. Там у них большой дом и сад. Летом... Максим и Нина отдыхают в деревне. Да? Ну а сейчас давайте почитаем. Let's take a look at this text. Итак, посмотрите, пожалуйста. Иван Иванович, Анна Петровна, Максим и Нина живут в Москве. Это мы уже хорошо знаем. But here's the new part of the story. У них новая квартира. А дедушка и бабушка живут в деревне. Там у них есть дом и сад. Хорошо. Итак, мы знаем, что бабушка и дедушка живут в деревне. В деревне у них есть дом и сад. А интересно, что есть в доме? Что в доме? Что у них в доме? Иван Иванович и его семья живут в квартире номер два. А какая у них квартира? Что в квартире? Что у них есть в квартире? Хорошо. But before we start talking about что есть в доме и что есть в квартире, I need to explain one thing. When you talk about apartments in the United States, you describe them in terms of one-bedroom apartment, two-bedroom apartment, three-bedroom apartment, etc., etc. But when you are talking about a one-bedroom apartment, how many rooms in general can we find in that apartment? One room is the bedroom, but there will probably be another room, some sort of a um, living area or a living room. So we are talking about at least a two-room apartment. One is a bedroom, the other one is your living room. Now when the Russian people describe apartments, they do not count bedrooms, they count rooms. Because rooms in an apartment can be multi-purpose room. It can be a bedroom during the night, but then during the day it may be converted into a living room or a study. So the Russian folks count rooms, not bedrooms in their apartment. And uh, when you are talking to a uh, person who lives in Russia, he or she will probably be describing her, his or her apartment as a three-room apartment or a two-room apartment, maybe four-room apartment. And again, though, most of those, of those rooms will be multi-purpose rooms. Okay. But what's the Russian word for a room? Комната. 
комната. Any kind of room is комната. Комната. Is this noun masculine, feminine, or neuter? Feminine. Комната. Комната. Now let's count them. Let's count the rooms. And this is what we do. Одна комната. One room. Одна комната. Комната is feminine. And you remember that the Russian word один is not a number, it's a modifier. And that agrees in number and gender with the word that it modifies. So одна ends in a because it's a feminine modifier. Комната ends in a because it's a feminine noun. Одна комната. Две комнаты. Now, два is a number, but this number has a special feminine form. Две. Две комнаты. Two rooms. Две комнаты. Одна комната. Две комнаты. Три комнаты. Четыре комнаты. And notice that with две, три, четыре, the ending on the word комната changes to ы. Две комнаты, три комнаты, четыре комнаты. Now let us move on and look at what happens when we have five rooms. Пять комнат. What happened? We lost the ending on that word altogether. Пять комнат. Шесть комнат. Пять комнат. Шесть комнат. And you can continue. Семь комнат. Восемь комнат. Девять комнат. Etc. Etc. Хорошо. So the important part to remember is that we say одна комната, две Комнаты, три комнаты, четыре комнаты, пять комнат. When you reach пять, you lose the ending from that word altogether. Пять комнат, шесть комнат. Хорошо. And now let's look at this phrase. У нас в квартире. In our apartment we have... And then you tell me how many rooms. If you live in a house, you begin with у нас в доме. In our house, we have. And again, you tell me how many rooms. If you live in, say, a three-bedroom apartment, there will be at least four rooms there. So you can say у нас квартире четыре комнаты. If you live in a three-bedroom uh, house, again, at least we are, we are counting on four rooms there. У нас в доме четыре комнаты. So I want you to practice with this. Expressing how many rooms you have in your apartment or in your house. And since you are not the only person who lives in that apartment or in that house, you begin with у нас. У нас в квартире четыре комнаты. О, у нас в квартире пять комнат. У нас в доме три комнаты. У нас в доме четыре комнаты. О, you can say у нас в доме Пять комнат. Maybe you live in a bigger house. У нас в доме шесть комнат. Maybe even семь комнат. But I want you to practice with that. And now let's look at this question. Сколько комнат? How many rooms? Сколько? По-английски how many? Сколько комнат? How many rooms? And notice that again, we don't have an ending on this word. Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? If you live in an apartment, I'm asking you how many rooms do you have in your apartment? Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? 
О, сколько комнат у вас в доме? You begin with сколько комнат? How many rooms? Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? О, сколько комнат у вас в доме? Хорошо. And now pick up your pens or pencils. And let's practice. I want you to very quickly translate into Russian the following dialogue. No? Хорошо. So, how many rooms do you have in your house? How do we pose that question in Russian? Сколько комнат у вас в доме? Сколько комнат, how many rooms, do you have у вас в доме? In the house. У нас четыре комнаты. У нас четыре Комнаты. Хорошо. Now let's continue our exploration of a house or an apartment. Now we know how to count the rooms, but what else can we find in a house or an apartment? Let's look at this word. Кухня. Кухня is a very important part in a house or in, in an apartment. Как это по-английски? Кухня. I'll say it one more time. I want you to guess. Кухня. Kitchen. Кухня. This may be somewhat difficult to pronounce because we have a strong H sound in the middle of this word. Кухня. 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 Итак, посмотрите, пожалуйста. Это кухня. Кухня. Хорошо. Well, besides кухня, it is very important to have a ванная. Let's look at this word. Ванная. Ванная. A bathroom. Ванная. Ванная. This is a room with a bathtub or a shower and a sink. Ванная. In many apartments in Russia, ванная is separate from a toilet. Туалет. So let's look at our, our next word. Туалет. In some apartments, your toilet and your bathroom are in one little room and you call it bathroom, as is the custom in the United States. But in many Russian apartments, your toilet is in a separate little closet-like room. So that separates your facilities. And then your ванная will be separate from туалет. So it's very important to have кухня, ванная и туалет. Your important facilities. Again, let's talk about Иван Иванович и его семья. Мы хорошо знаем, что они живут в Москве. У них есть квартира. В квартире у них три комнаты, кухня, ванная и туалет. В квартире есть. В квартире есть три комнаты, кухня, ванная и туалет. Хорошо. Let's look at our next phrase. Большая комната. Как это по-английски? Большая комната. A big room. What kind of a room would this be? What is the American equivalent of this? Большая комната. A family room. 
один. Большая комната. Большая комната. Your family room. What's the Russian word for a bedroom? Let's take a look at it. Спальня. Спальня means the room where you sleep. Спальня. Большая комната. It's your big room, your family room. And then спальня. A bedroom. Спальня. But again, this word means a room where you sleep. It identifies the purpose of that room right away. Спальня. Хорошо. Давайте посмотрим на картинки. Итак, посмотрите, пожалуйста, и скажите мне, что это? Какая это комната? What kind of a room is this? Какая это комната? Это большая комната. Хорошо. А это? Что это? Какая это комната? Это спальня. Хорошо. But let's go back to большая комната. Большая комната. What do people do in a family room? Да, they, they rest. They relax. Здесь мы отдыхаем. Да, мы читаем, мы смотрим телевизор, мы слушаем музыку. Да, это наша большая комната. Здесь мы отдыхаем. And what kind of furniture can we find in a большая комната? Let's look at this word. Диван. Диван. A sofa or a couch can probably be found in everybody's family room. Диван. 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 Хорошо. Our next word is стол. And do you remember from Russian one what стол is? A table. Стол. Стол. And if there's a стол, then you certainly need a стул as well. So let's take a look at the next one. Стул. A chair. And here's your plural form. Стулья. Chairs. This word has a somewhat irregular plural formation. Стулья. Стулья. Chairs. So if there's a stall, table, then you do need a stool, a chair. Or стулья. Chairs to place around it. Хорошо. So pick up your pens and again let's write this down. Well, we started with комната. Комната. A room. And what's the Russian word for a bedroom? Спальня. And then we talked about кухня. Ванная. Туалет. And finally, we discuss the furniture. The stall and stool. And what's the plural form of stool? Стулья. Стулья. Итак, комната, спальня, кухня, ванная, туалет, стол, стулья. Стулья. Ну, хорошо. Хорошо. Now let us leave большая комната and go to кухня. What do we have there? In some houses, we have natural gas. 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 This is not the gas that you put in your car. It's natural gas that is used to heat people's houses. Gas. Gas. And if you have a gas, then you will have газовая плита. What's this? A gas stove. 
газовая плита. And one more time after me. Газовая плита. Well, in those houses where we don't have gas, we can find электра плита. Электра плита. And what does электра mean? Electrical. Электра плита. Электра плита. So the center of your kitchen is going to be either a газовая плита or электра плита. And then we need вода. Вода. Холодная вода. Which is what kind of water? Cold water. Холодная вода. Холодная вода. And we also need горячая вода. And what kind of water is this? Hot. Hot water. Горячая вода. Итак, плита, your stove, холодная вода, горячая вода. Now, what else do we need in the kitchen? Холодильник. Холодильник. And what is this? The refrigerator. And notice that it begins with холод, because it generates cold, right? Холодильник, a refrigerator. So let's take a look at all of these things that are necessary for us to have in кухня. Газовая плита о электроплита. Холодная вода. Горячая вода. Холодильник. Хорошо. And now let us write this down. So we have газовая плита, газовая плита, электро плита. We have холодная вода. Холодная вода. And then we certainly need горячая вода. And холодильник. A refrigerator. Газовая плита, электроплита. Холодная вода, горячая плита, вода. И холодильник, a refrigerator. Так, мы знаем, что Иван Иванович и его семья живут в квартире номер два. В квартире у них три комнаты, кухня, ванная и туалет. So let's look at this short text that describes where Иван Иванович lives and what they have in their apartment. Так, Иван Иванович и его семья живут в квартире номер два. В квартире у них три комнаты, кухня, ванная и туалет. And let's continue our description. У них есть горячая и холодная вода и газ. В кухне есть газовая плита и холодильник. Хорошо. Now we can say, у них хорошая квартира. У них есть три комнаты, кухня, ванная и туалет. У них есть горячая вода, холодная вода и газ. Да? В кухне есть газовая плита и холодильник. У них хорошая квартира. I need you to practice with this vocabulary and um, 
I need you to be able to answer these questions. Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? О, у вас в доме. У вас есть большая комната? У вас есть кухня? У вас есть ванная и туалет? У вас есть газ? У вас есть газовая плита? У вас есть электроплита? So notice that all of this new vocabulary that we learned today can be used in questions and answers. You can describe your house or your apartment and you should be able to ask questions about other people's houses or apartments. Very quickly, let's take a look at this. If I were to ask you to come up with three questions addressed to your Russian pen pal about his or her apartment, would you be able to do that? Now I want you to take a minute and come up with three questions that you would like to ask your Russian pen pal about his or her apartment. So what questions can you ask about your pen pal's apartment? And remember, you address your questions to your pen pal, right? And now you should be able to ask him or her the following. Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? And notice that we are using у вас because your pen pal would not be the only person living in that apartment. So you have to use the plural pronoun here. Сколько комнат у вас в квартире? And then you can ask, у вас есть газ? And you know, so some apartments have it and other apartments don't. And you can ask, у вас есть горячая вода? You know, it is important to have hot water supply. So practice with asking questions about apartments or houses and finding out what people have there and what it is that they don't have. And again, that, that's a very important skill. So after this lesson, I want you to take your additional exercises and start working on those. And then at home, Please memorize all the new vocabulary from today's lesson. I know it's a lot, but it's important stuff. And then in the workbook, find lesson 9 on page 76, complete sentences 11 through 15. And this will provide you with additional practice with the vocabulary that we covered today in class. Так? Большое спасибо. До свидания.